Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. We're back in my new filming spot location because guess what? We have that one car that seems to never age. It's this car right here. This is it. This is a 2023 Lexus LC500, obviously drop top convertible. But before we get into this naturally aspirated V8 that comes from an iconic Japanese brand, let's talk about what's going on here, Lexus. They are taking it slow and steady with their transition to full electrification. Not too long ago, we did the Lexus RZ450e. That's their first fully electric compact crossover SUV. But unlike a lot of the other brands, they're not in a major rush, and that makes someone like myself very happy. What's great is with the LC500, we're not talking about a smaller displacement engine or twin turbos or anything like that. You're still able to get that five liter naturally aspirated V8 goodness, and you're getting it in a shape that seems to never go out of style. This could possibly be the most recent of all vehicles where it's just a timeless design because since its introduction, besides them launching a convertible, they have not made any refreshes or major redesigns since that time. But what I want to find out is there's a lot of luxury cars out there and a lot of them that are pretty darn good. Is this LC500 the best ever built when it comes to a luxury car, especially a GT luxury convertible car? Let's go ahead. Let's dive into our flare yellow LC500 and find out right off the bat. Like I said, the shape, it is such an art deco form, looks like a concept car, but it's a full on production vehicle. Now at the front of the business, I've always liked the way they did the headlight housing on this particular vehicle. Very small, that triangular setup. We got our triple LED beam headlights, everything blacked out on the interior, some metallic gray, and then you're gonna have your LED turn signals, functional corner air curtain, so it's nice to see that functionality and you have that Lexus designed daytime running lamp that's also LED, super smooth, nothing else kind of cluttering up the front corner. Now, as we come across that massive open grill, that spindle grill design, I don't think any other Lexus vehicle interprets the grill better than this one. You have that spindle waterfall. I love the way it's got that metallic gray, just like on the corners of the front fascia. And I love the way it changes. It goes from the individual studs down to this waterfall design and really just kind of sits perfectly within this lower lip that's a bright silver. Now with this being a luxury GT style rear wheel drive car, it does have a little bit of chrome, a little bling, nothing too out of the ordinary and nothing that's gonna be too gaudy. And I think that's some of the ways that this has defined time is just being clean without being cluttered. Now, as we get up onto that long, low slung hood, you have that beautiful solar flare metallic yellow, and underneath is the heart of this beast, that V8, but very, very smooth, very subtle with the curves, and everything flows nicely into the eight pillars. Now, as we come around the bend, what do we got going on? wheel and tire setup. You have these 21 inch wheels, still not changed, but still looking good. That hand polished aluminum with the gloss black. Let me know what you think about these 21 inch wheels. If you're still digging them or if you want to see something different, massive size rotors, the size of a Japanese pizza. That's where they put shrimp, extra shrimp on the Japanese pizzas. And then of course, if you're wondering, well, what's the size of the tire? 245 on the width, and you got a 40 series sidewall all the way around. We got adaptive dampers, all four corners, and this is rear wheel drive. And guess what? We got 255s up front. Wait until you see what we got sending the power to the rear end of this vehicle. But as we rise up, I'm gonna swing around here, and we're gonna see on that fender, nothing stuck on. I like the way it's got the V indentation, sort of like on the front of the vehicle, nicely placed right in that top portion of the fender where it flows into the A pillar, flows into the door. Some painted gloss black with just a little smidge of chrome and tiny, tiny, tiny LED lights. That bottom sill extension comes down, channeling air, guess what? Towards a functional rear vent. And you'll notice how it 
curves out like a Coke bottle. To help with the overall design, you do have the flush mounted door handles. And if you're wondering how do you open up the door, just like that. And then it closes and then that'll eventually tuck back in. Working our way towards the rear. It's almost like when they designed the coupe, they kind of knew it was going to be a convertible as well because you can see how without the roof line, you still got this beautiful shape that comes into our rear cover, this tonneau cover that actually hides the cloth drop top. You have your flared out rear and then dropping our way down. Remember, we got power going to the rear wheels through an LSD. No, not the drugs that maybe your parents did back in the 60s. We're talking about a limited slip differential, 275 on the width. So we got more rubber to grab the road and you can see how we still have that nice Brembo brake setup. Not as large as up front, but still quite large at the rear. And then swinging around back, just like we started this car review, you, you got this clean style. Love the way they do this unique LED style that when the light isn't on, it's actually like this white color that looks cool. A Little bit of shiny on top with some vortex generators. Come to the center, you got your of course, third brake light nicely integrated, the Lexus badge, LC500. 500. 500 stands for that five liter. And then dropping our way down, clean on the rear diffuser. Now you do have decorative trim rings around the exhaust openings, but you do have functional exhaust on both sides. But man, this sparkling banana is looking really good. Let's peel back the hood and take a look at that five liter V8. All right guys, we peel back that banana peel and underneath that massive hood is a quite good looking engine cover. I have to give it to Lexus. Nice looking engine cover and I also like the way, look at the bracing, tying in the front of the vehicle and also tying in that portion with the firewall up front. That's gonna help stiffen up the front end. But what are we talking about with this GT luxury drop top. You're looking at that five liter V8, naturally aspirated goodness, pumping out 471 horsepower, 398 pound-feet of torque. It's bolted to a 10-speed automatic transmission, zero to 60 in about 4.3 seconds, top speed 168 miles per hour. The vehicle, she is heavy because she is a little larger for a two-door drop top. 4,476 pounds, MPGs, 15 in the city, 25 on the highway. Of course, you're gonna get that bulletproof Lexus reliability out of this engine and gearbox. And then of course, they hold a really good value, but you know what? They hold a sweet spot in my heart. Let me show you and fire up this LC500. guys we are inside this sexy shape lc 500 i got the top up just to make it a little easier for steven to get the job done on his end i know you're saying to yourself well joe i want something that definitely is fun to drive i am all about v8 power and you're right this thing still seems as fresh as day one but the big question is for the convertible, how much is the LC500? So this particular one, the way that it's optioned has an MSRP right around $106,000. Let's see what you get for your money. To the door panels, one of the best looking door panels ever. I love the material, soft touch, that little piece of aluminum trim, the way it all flows looks spectacular. Even the way they did the door handle, it's like also an oh crap handle for your passenger but everything just very clean and classy. Now the door pocket is a good size. With the divider though, you're gonna have to get your Subway foot long split into two individual sandwiches. So get your meatball sub, go ahead, get the extra parm, but then just have them wrap it six inches each and you'll be fine. Now going from the door panel to the dash, very unique design. The AC vents are actually almost totally horizontal but it's actually pretty easy to get the air to flow towards you. Soft touch, 
with the nice stitching to drop the glove box, you actually hit this button right up top. Watch this. One, two, three. Boop. Full velt lining. So you could put your velvety soft material and you could put your family jewels in there that will not get scratched. Working your way in, you got that large infotainment system screen, but the problem is, you hear that? There's actually this plastic that covers it. It's not a touch screen and it's the older operating software. This is the stuff that hurts because you gotta use the trackpad and it's a real pain in the rear end, especially when you wanna adjust things like, let me see, let me bring up the menu here. You wanna do climate and you wanna do your ventilated seats you gotta come over here and do it. And while you're driving, this would be ultra dangerous. The nice thing is we got the concierge package, which has full massage seating, but you have to use the track pad to do it. Not my favorite. I wish that they would update this, but who knows? I think the next step is just killing off the LC500. We got another AC vent for the driver. Love the way they got the silver dual climate controls. Very nice feel to everything. You have an actual CD player, so you can listen to Sweat to the Oldies while you're driving. We got the optional Mark Levinson sound system. Little hidden cup holder there, kind of weird. I wouldn't want to drink right there. To be honest with you, you're not drinking in my LC500. You want to talk about great feeling switch gear. This volume knob is absolutely stupendous, and you got extra for the tuning. There's that trackpad. That's the zonk. But I love the stitching. This is gonna control your 10 speed automatic. And the best thing is no gloss black. If you're wondering, well, Joe, what's under this? First of all, this is your palm rest. So you can rest your palm, the back of your hand, maybe a couple fingers, but watch this. Lift it up. You got your controls for the power top and for those rear windows. You just pull back and those windows go up, close it down. You could slide this back for a little tiny cinnamon red hot holder, or we can flip it up only my way. And if you flip it up my way, you got two USBs, USB A's, you got a 12 volt, and you got enough room for six bubblegum cigars. The problem is, can't open it your way. So it's my way or the highway. Seats, the leather, the stitching, the softness, the Napa leather, soft as can be, nice bolstering, full power adjustments for the passenger and the driver. And with the top up, I'm six feet tall, plenty of headroom in here. Now I'm not getting to the back seat. Watch one of my other LC500 reviews. But one thing I wanna point out with the top down, we have that windscreen up, it blocks your vision in the mirror and not in a very good way. So why don't you come over here to the business end? I wanna show you behind the wheel of the LC500. All right guys, business time behind the wheel. This one has the optional carbon fiber sill plates. Love the way that nice carbon fiber greets you with the Lexus name. Pedal box right out of a freaking race car. Love the massive dead pedal, aluminum, brake pedal, and throttle. We do have the leather on the lower portion of the seats, right by the seat controls. Really shows the attention to detail. And then like I said, I'm six feet tall. Plenty of headroom in here with the top up. Steering wheel, I still think it looks phenomenal. Timeless, just like the rest of the car. Leather, the stitching, leather on the horn button, flat black on all the switch gear. You have these surfboard style metal paddles, not plastic, and it's an electric tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And then you got that beautiful digital gauge cluster that actually changes depending on what mode you're in. And of course, here on Radies Rides, we're seeing Sport Plus, and watch this, a little magic trick. Hit the button, and then it slides over to reveal a cornucopia of other gauges, including a G-meter and also your different temperatures for everything. Nice to have that information, and then you slide it back over. You do have a head-up display. We're gonna show you the trunk. It's not gonna take long because it's not very large, and then we're going on throttle in this V8-powered luxury convertible. Yeah, it's time to get into the trunk and you might be surprised, maybe you won't be surprised about the amount of space that there is. Now, the one thing I'm surprised about and I am gonna zonk is there's no exterior button to pop the trunk. You either do it through the key fob or the button inside the cabin of the vehicle, but you lift this up. What's nice is, is that no matter if you have the top up or down, you're gonna get the same amount of space. I guess the thing that's not so nice is gonna be the amount of space. You have seven cubic feet of space. The good news is you could easily put two 
carry on roller bags back here. So there is enough room for you to go on a trip and have some usable space. And to be honest with you, those rear seats, they're not meant for human proportions. So you could actually put some luggage back there too. But you know what? I could give a care less about luggage. What I care about is on throttle. So if you're ready, I'm ready. We got the top dropped. Let's go on throttle in this LC500. All right, guys, we got the top peeled back in this sparkling banana. Of course, I'm in Sport Plus mode. I'm gonna use those metal paddles to go through the 10 speed. And if you're ready, I'm freaking ready. On throttle, here we go, yeah, woo! Nice sound from that V8. Here we go. Heck yeah. Shedding that speed. So let's talk about what's going on here. I think that what you saw with the ABS getting involved is part of that, this being more of a luxury grand touring car rather than an all out sports car. Although it does come with a lot of attributes that are pure sports car. The V8, naturally aspirated, the LSD, limited slip dip, the big brakes and rotors, the seats that hold you better than a mother holds her newborn baby, and really just a nice balanced chassis. It's not something that is going to outperform, say, a C8 Corvette, but it's not really sloppy, which is nice as well. It's not like you're in some type of bathtub and you're slopping around. This does feel pretty planted and communicates really well. I think one of the things that I like is when you're behind the wheel, you really feel like you're in it, not on it. And I really like that overall setup. The dash, so easy to read, especially when you get close to that 7,000 RPM red line, the dash starts to flash red the tech to let you know to ship because obviously I was using the paddles but everything else everywhere you fit feel the fit and finish is phenomenal and very very classy and that's the whole thing when we talk about a car not aging whatsoever is this the best one that really has the secret sauce just like the Colonel has the secret recipe for the fried chicken all right guys we got to do it again we're gonna do it from a dead stop. If you're ready, I'm ready. On throttle, here we go, yeah! A chirping tire is a happy tire. Love the roar of that V8. Oh, freaking amazing. the car communicates front to rear. It gives a lot of feedback to the steering wheel to let you know what's going on grip level wise. It's just the one major downside is that the weight. There's only so many ways to get around the weight of this vehicle. But like I said, this is not the true interpretation of what this vehicle is about. I'm glad I could go through the twisty bits, have a blast, have the top down, hear, hear that amazing V8 sound, have the linear torque delivery, but you know what? You could cruise down at the beach, you could go out to a really nice dinner, and this car just stands out in every which way. All right, guys, one more time for you. Definitely one more time for me. Second gear, 3,500 RPM. Oh, here we go. Yeah! 
<laughs> so that decreasing radius corner really catches people out by surprise. And I'm telling you, even though she was working me a little bit, she still danced very well. And the transmission shifts very, very smooth. Whether you leave it in automatic mode or you're using the pedals, I like how smooth it shifts. And even though it's a traditional torque converter, 10 speed automatic, it's got some pretty quick shifts. But we need to get back and wrap this one up so I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys, it's been a fun day. Definitely with this LC500, we gotta thank everybody at Lexus USA for allowing us access to this press fleet vehicle. Let me know what you think. Driving it through the twisty bits, hearing that nice naturally V8 aspirated engine sound really was glorious. It's not a sports car, but boy oh boy, what a luxury GT car. Do you think that this is the best luxury car ever built? Let me know down in that comment section, but if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rise family. Of course, we gotta give it up to Stephen Flood. Stephen Flood Photography doing the magic. Show him some love in the comment section. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.